If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and give the question a shot before listening on. What we want to do first is draw a picture of the car, which we've already done, and then we want to show the forces that are acting on the car by using a free body diagram. So one of the forces that's acting on the car is the downward gravitational force, which we can label mg. We have the surface of the road pushing up on the car, and that's known as the normal force. And then there is a force that's causing the car to decelerate and eventually come to rest, and that's going to turn out to be a frictional force between the tires of the car and the road, and we can call that force F. We can then turn to Newton's second law, which says that the net force that's acting on the car is equal to its mass times its acceleration. Now we have three forces that are acting on the car, but what we have to realize is that the normal force and the gravitational force cancel each other out. And we know that because the car is not accelerating either vertically upward or vertically downward. So these two forces are going to cancel each other away. And the only force that's left, therefore, is this frictional force right here. Now you'll notice it's pointing to the left, and we're going to call that the negative direction. We'll call the right the positive direction. So in essence, our net force is going to be that single frictional force. Notice again, we put the negative sign in front of it. And that's equal to the mass times the acceleration. Now, frictional force can be substituted with the coefficient of friction times the normal force. And then the normal force, if we go back to the free body diagram, we mentioned that the normal force was equal in magnitude to the gravitational force. So we can actually plug in mg for the normal force. And then we can see that mass appears on both sides of the equation. And so we can actually cancel it out. In essence, what you're doing is you're dividing both sides of the equation by the mass m. And so it will cancel. That leaves us with negative mu times g is equal to the acceleration. We can solve this equation for mu by dividing both sides by negative g. And when we do that, we can see that mu is equal to the acceleration divided by negative g. Now the question gave us the value of acceleration on level road. It's negative 3.8 meters per second squared, and then gravity has a value of 9.8 meters per second squared. And when we divide these out, we're going to get the value of that coefficient of friction. And that turns out to be about 0.388. Now this is not the correct answer to the question, of course, but this is something that we're going to be using. So let's hold on to that value for the coefficient of friction and look next at the incline. So now the car is on the incline and the question notes that it's inclined at an angle of 9.3 degrees. So we can draw a dotted horizontal here. We'll mark this as theta, which is going to, again, be the 9.3 degrees. And we need to draw the forces that are acting on the car. Now, we have the downward gravitational force that we can label mg. We have the surface pushing up and perpendicular on the car. So that force is going to be pointing in this direction here. And that is known as the normal force. And then we have the frictional force that, again, is opposing the motion of the car. We can label that F. We presume that the car is traveling uphill, as noted in the question. So the frictional force is going to point downhill to oppose that motion. Now, what we actually need to do is take the gravitational force and break it up into its components. And there's going to be a component that runs parallel to the surface of the ramp, as well as perpendicular to the surface of the ramp. We can begin with the component that's perpendicular, perhaps. So that component is going to be pointing in this direction right here. And we can label that with an arrowhead. And then we have a component that's parallel to the surface of the ramp. And that component can be pointing in this direction here. Perhaps a little bit challenging to see. In fact, why don't we go ahead and zoom in on this picture right here. So we've kind of blown up that portion of the diagram. We have the gravitational force pointing straight down, and then we have the component of mg that's perpendicular to the surface of the ramp, and then the component that's parallel to the surface of the ramp. Now it turns out that this angle right here is going to have the same value as the angle of incline. And so we've marked that as theta in this diagram. We need to find these two components. If we look at this component, which is the one that's perpendicular to the ramp, we can see that it is adjacent to that angle. And adjacent means we would use the cosine to represent that component. So that component is going to be mg times the cosine of theta. This component is opposite of that angle, and therefore we'll use the sine. So that's going to be mg times the sine of theta. 
Now, once you have those two components, you can essentially discard the original mg force. You don't need that force. What we want are the components that are perpendicular to the ramp as well as parallel to the ramp. And so those are those two components. We have the frictional force in the diagram that's pointing down the ramp parallel to it. So we could add that to our enlarged free body diagram. And then we also have the normal force, which is pointing off in this direction, also perpendicular to the ramp. We can now apply Newton's second law. And we're going to do so in what we'll call the x direction. So this is the direction that's going up the ramp. We can call this direction positive and this direction negative. So we would have the net force in the x direction is equal to the mass times the acceleration. There are two forces acting along the x direction. There's the frictional force as well as the mg sine theta force. They're both pointing down the ramp, so they're both going to be negative. So we would have negative f minus mg sine theta, and that's going to equal mass times acceleration. Remember that the frictional force can be replaced with the coefficient of friction times the normal force. And then we have to recall that normal force can be substituted for as well. If we look at the y direction, we see the normal force is pointing in the positive y direction, and then mg cos theta is pointing in the negative y direction. Those two forces once again cancel each other out because the car is not accelerating in that y direction. So in other words, we can replace the normal force with mg cos theta. So our equation would be rewritten by making that substitution for the normal force. And then if we study this equation carefully, we're going to see that mass appears in all three terms of the equation, right there, there, and there. So we can rewrite it without the mass. And we can then go ahead, if we wish, and plug in the known values. So mu we found earlier was 0.388, g is 9.8, the angle that the incline had formed was 9.3 degrees. So we can fill in all those known values, we'll pick up our calculators, we'll make sure that we are in degree mode and type in this expression. And when we do that we get about negative 5.34 meters per second squared for the acceleration of the car when it goes up the incline.